you come back. Hi, it's Eli Jones from PLCCulture.com. Thank you guys so much for having me. Hey, Eli. Of course. What's nice up, Eli? Uh, first of all, I got was able to get a screener of the film a few days ago. Um, edge of my seat the entire time. <laughs> I think you guys did a brilliant job on the film. And uh, so watching the film, it was a bit reminiscent of uh, real life situations. It reminded me a bit of the Madeleine McCann situation many, many years ago, which also happened on international soil. So I was wondering, were there any real life stories that you guys kind of took inspiration from and kind of conceiving the story in the production? Um, not necessarily like, and not, nothing truly like I, I think we have a lot of respect, um, for true crime. Like, I mean, we, we don't, I mean, these movies are in some way a slight, there's always a slight under theme of the scandalization of true crime and the persona and the ownership of it. So we really, we did listen to a lot of true crime podcasts. I remember we listened to like to, to live and well, die in LA. Was a big one. That was a big one. Um, we watched all the great documentaries, but ultimately we wanted to come up with the, our most original unique take on it. So just so we can ever pull from someone's real life tragedy. Um, obviously the movie goes in some crazier directions, but right. ultimately we wanted the field to be as if you were probably watching a movie made about a real life crime. Yeah, our, our feeling was like if people walked down, we're like, was this based on something like that? Then, then we've done something right. Absolutely. Uh, what was the importance of making this particular crime an international one as opposed to like on, you know, domestic soil like the previous one? Was, was that something that you guys kind of had the idea to do uh, going into it? Or was that something that kind of developed as the script came out? Yeah, I think early on when we knew we were going to make the sequel, one of the things we all talked about as a team was, you know, we want to, we want to make this, you know, bigger. And how do we kind of, you know, try to top ourselves from the last one. And right away, one of those ideas was like, let's make it global because what is more challenging than, you know, looking for someone who's missing and then realizing they're in a different country. And what if you can't get there? You know, what are the tools that at that person's disposal? We thought that would open up a lot of cool, really uh, narrative avenues. And uh, Columbia seemed like a really Cool place to go. So no, I'm kidding. That's not that's not why we chose. <laughs> Natalie's that, saying we chose Cartagena because we just want a vacation there. Yeah. No, but I mean, what's what's exciting about it is like if this happened to you in real life, you would probably still use your computer to find out what happened. Yeah. So it really naturally lent itself to the story organically, and it felt bigger. You know, all the best sequels are the ones that go global. So why not? Absolutely. So obviously, you have such a great cast um, in this film. Everyone from Neil Long to Storm Reid. Um, so I was kind of curious, what drew you to the casting of the main actress, Storm Reid, as a uh, June in this film. I mean, look, like we to to make this movie, we needed uh, we kind of needed a unicorn, you know, somebody who was young, um, had enough experience underneath their belt, could handle the incredible pressure of this job, both on the technical level, but also on the really emotional, psychological level. There aren't a lot of actors that fit that bill. And when Storm came to us, it was immediately, I think the all of us, we just had a visceral reaction of like, she's incredible because. Storm is one of those rare actors, in our opinion, that anytime you're watching something, you know, she, she's been in a lot of amazing movies and TV shows. Every now and then the camera will be on her. And when the camera goes away, I'm like, no, go back, go back, because she's so incredible at what she does. And we really hit the jackpot because she brought not only the sense of experience to this role, but she brought a real sense of authenticity that she was able to go from the range of vulnerable teen to headstrong badass trying to find and save her mom. We're so lucky to have her. Absolutely. And speaking of chemistry and cast members, uh, you know, this is a really unique film, as was the previous one, because um, they're really all in the same place at the same time. So, you know, for example, like Javi's character, he's all the way in Colombia and Storm's character, June, she's all the way in uh, Van Nuys in Los Angeles. So what how does how does, you know, kind of filming in that kind of a situation work where you're able to keep the chemistry between the actors if they're not exactly all in the same place? Like what's some of the logistics that goes into that? Yeah, it was a bit of a matrix because, of course, you've got, you know, actors and schedules and they don't necessarily, like you said, need to be in the same place at the same time. But Will and Nick were really insistent on, you know, having some rehearsal time. I think that was key to building some of the chemistry and they got to work with, um, I know, Javi, Javi's character played by Joachim and Storm, who plays June, they got to spend some time in rehearsal. And I think that their chemistry kind of shows um, and was better for it. And then, you know, we were just so lucky with this cast because they're all really, really giving. And, you know, for example, with Storm, um, she was willing to like be on set, come to set if she wasn't shooting that day and be there off camera for Nia. So at least she could read the lines, even though they couldn't see each other. Um, so, you know, hats off mm -hmm. to the cast for that and supporting each other. But, you know, it's a movie. Sometimes we had to have Will or Nick recording the lines off screen. Mm -hmm. 
um, opposite for the cast. But I think it's testament to the actors that they were able to kind yeah. of build that chemistry. And if I'm not mistaken, when we were in Colombia filming scenes with Joaquim as Javi, if I'm not mistaken, there was a couple of instances where Storm was up in the middle of the night, yes. literally in LA or New York, like in the middle of the night so that she could be as another voice opposite. so that so that Joaquim could act opposite her, man. It's that commitment that really helped the movie. Yeah. Absolutely. And it really comes through in the performance and the relationship that the two of them kind of build throughout the film. You can really feel there's like a certain authenticity that really comes through. So uh, it, it makes sense when I hear that. Um, so what was the relevance of telling this particular story at this time? So, you know, we're coming out of the pandemic and everything like that. And, you know, a lot of people are coming back outdoors or kind of have been outdoors for a little bit. And, um, you know, this is kind of a story about being cautious as you kind of go out in a certain sense. So what was the relevance of kind of telling this story at this time? Yeah, man, I mean, look, searching was a little bit prophetic, right? That movie in which you're seeing characters use screens to just communicate and live their lives. I mean, we ended up all somewhat experiencing that during the, the height of the pandemic. With, with Missing, it was about leaning into that and also leaning even more into the themes of how much tech connects us and also disconnects us. You know, our approach to uh, screens in these films is always one that we try to be holistic about it. Yes, the, the technology is so often a source of the danger, but every now and then the technology can be used with the right means to help bring people back together again. So, you know, I think we all coming out of the height of the pandemic know that firsthand. And this movie is a way to relive that, but also as a way to escape, because at the end of the day, it's a fun, twisty spectacle of a movie. And, you know, just watching audiences together in a communal space, experiencing it is is the proof to us that you know at the end of the day nothing beats uh real life interactions whether it's the movie or each other absolutely so natalie the the cast is very ethnically diverse you know in this film so even like watching the credits roll i'm seeing a lot of very you know names from lots of desi actors like very uh you know a lot of just different races and ethnicities kind of in the mix so what was the importance of that and did the biracial makeup of the leading trio shape how the crime played out so it's kind of a two-part question so uh, as far as the casting goes, you know, what was the importance of having a very diverse cast and then did the biracial makeup of Nia Long and the family there kind of shape the story a little bit? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, you know, kind of an unofficial rule with our team is to always, you know, cast diverse because for, for us, it really comes down to this question and Sev always puts this really eloquently that it's not a question of why should they be diverse? It's, it's really why not? Um, Cause we're, we're all trying to just normalize, you know, we're Armenian American, um, and, and, uh, you know, um, we just didn't see that growing up, you know, seeing people of diverse backgrounds in stories that are not necessarily about diversity. And so we believe that's a way to normalize things. Um, and to the second part of your question, yeah, we absolutely did. I mean, we basically went out and cast wide and we weren't sure what kind of family we were going to compose. But once we found Storm, she really anchored it for us and we built it around her. Um, yeah. And it was really intentional just to portray an inter interracial, you know, yes. whether it's the marriage or whether it's the relationship, just because you don't see enough of that. And it's like another another instance of why not? Um, it, it all goes back to that. We just want to we just want to normalize representation and and, uh, you know, little by little, hopefully that can partake a little bit of change in the real world as well. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, closing thoughts from both of you guys. Uh, what would you kind of like viewers to finish watching this film and take away from it? What would be the theme, the lesson, you know, what would be something you'd kind of like to stick in their brains? So, yeah, whereas Searching was really a story about parents learning that, you know, their children had lives that they need to, you know, be more attentive to. We hope that with this one, at least I do, that, you know, everyone can kind of look at their parents and realize that they also have their own lives and their own secrets and their own challenges and own sacrifices they've made. And, you know, be a little bit nicer to your mom and don't make fun of her when she says, hey, Siri, all the time. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, I think going off of that, I think there's a, a theme of connection here and that, you know, despite the fact that we're like all talking and all connected, you know, whether it's social media or just texting, um, sometimes we're not hearing each other, listening to each other. So really, you know, really, really trying to listen to the people we love and check in on them in a meaningful way. Absolutely. Well, once again, I thank you guys so much for your time to be able to discuss this film. Uh, really, really brilliantly put together. Um, I love, I still love the way you guys used, you know, all of the technology and everything. And it's so clever the way you guys kind of place the camera and like have everything run through. And I know that's something you continue from the first film. So just being able to kind of pioneer that style, I think I'm very fond and very fond of this movie that you guys have put together in the series. Hopefully we'll get a third one, but uh, thank you guys so much for your time talking about this today. And we look forward to watching Missing as soon as it comes out in theaters. And thank you so much for your time today, guys. 
Thank you so awesome. much. Thanks, Eli. It means a lot. All right. Have a great day. Take care. Thanks.